Well shit, guys, it happens again. Just way too many good new mods. It's mostly weapons and armors, but also quest mods, settlement stuff, really, the full package. And I really want to review all of it. So it looks like I have to split the video into parts again, no way around it. So let's do it. So I thought, uh, let's start with the simple stuff, you know, a little warm up to get the brain going. Sweet Roll 5000 by Fading Signal. Yes, the vanilla sweet rolls do not look very eatable. I mean, what the hell is this? It's not even a roll. It looks like a stepped on turd. And here we have the glorious 5000 edition. Just look at this perfectly even and seamless sugar coating. A work of art. That also applies to the special happy birthday sweet roll, of which I have not heard before, but I'll look it up. But you know, there will sure be people who say that does not look very law friendly, that does not fit into the post apocalyptic game. We need something more gross. There actually is a gross version. I guess it's for people who want to recreate their real life kitchen experience. You know, for immersion. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Next mod. And the next one is something old school inspired and also with thousands. What can it be? Pip Boy 2000 by the Pimp Crew. Not to be confused with the new Pip Boy 2000 from the Fallout 76 trailer. This right here is the Pip Boy from the original Fallout game. The one in the trailer is actually called Pip Boy 2000 Mark VI and is supposed to be an upgraded version. Makes sense, since Fallout 76 is supposed to be one of the control worlds, according to the lore, but actually they should have the best available high-end tag there. And it should actually look more advanced than the one from Fallout 3 and 4. Actually. But it looks like Bethesda decided to go with the old school look instead. Anyway, this mod is actually based on the Pip Pad mod, so obviously you can use only one of them at a time. The same goes for all the other mods which out of the Pip Boy 2, of course. And yes, it does look cool, sure, with a high chance of making you feel nostalgic. And it's also a good alternative for those who want a lore-friendly excuse to not wear a Pip Boy on the arm. The next mod is supposed to make our traveling and exploring more colorful by adding music. Self Radio by Trey Bones 22. This mod adds a new custom radio station, which you can fill up with your own songs. For this you will first need to convert the tracks into a wave format, then rename them to numbers from 1 to max 25 and put them into the self radio folder. Currently this mod supports up to 25 custom songs. So let's see how the whole thing works. Jesus fuck, who the hell is this? Who is that singer? I think this guy should never sing again. Let's get the hell out of here. Abandon mod, abandon mod. The next mod aims to reflect the current time period in visible form for our settlements. Pride 2K18 flags by Ophelia Claude Z. With the Pride Mods currently being around and all, as usual, modders adapt damn fast. There are six different flags to decorate settlements and represent the different Pride groups. It's just too bad the modder didn't think outside the box. Or maybe I should say inside the game. What I mean is, they could have added a new flag for the ghouls and also one for the thins too, since we are at it. But then again, there is actually a blank flag, so you can put anything you want on it. Behold, the Ikarian Pride flag! Yes, I know, I didn't have the time to figure out how to apply the transparency correctly, but it's okay, it's even better. The Ikarian flag has no holes, no flaws, no weaknesses, only solid steel heart resolve. Join the Ikarian army now, friends, and together we shall claim. Oh, wait, wait, I'm getting sidetracked here. Alright, since I'm gathering an army now, it's time to get some weapons. 
And this is also the time to get hyped, because for some reason there was a real boom of high quality weapon mods. Starting with the famous rifle, the Enfield by Texaguel. This rifle was a standard weapon of the British Army in the beginning of the 19th century. It's a classic single bolt action rifle. The original weapon had several designs and improvements during its lifetime. Here in this mod it has a 10 bullet magazine and uses 308 cal rounds. The amount of customization is not that big on this one. 8 receivers, 2 different colors, 3 side options, barrels in 2 different lengths and also a bayonet and a suppressor attachment. It's sure a decent weapon mod. But okay, it's funny because the next mod is actually also a Leon field. Leon field number 4 Mark 1, Britain's finest by Asksess. I bet it's pure coincidence that the two modders decided to make the same weapon at the same time. It might look the same at the first glance, but upon closer examination you will notice that it's actually a completely different mod. First of all, to obtain this one, you will have to complete a short quest which starts at the Museum of Freedom. It's quick and simple, just to make sure you receive this weapon immersively, I guess. You should definitely do it, however, because at the end of the quest you get to decide how exactly the weapon should be integrated into your game. But anyway, let's examine the actual piece a bit closer. Everything about it is different. The textures, all the animations, even the mesh is slightly different. The amount of customization is also much larger for this mod. You can make the Leon fields ridiculously short here or ridiculously long. I mean, really long. Look at this. Can also be alternatively used at the fishing pole. Yeah, I bet the gun freaks would love to kick my ass for such jokes. There are also some really stylish flaggy paints you can apply to the weapon and also the blue tape makes an appearance here again. Also, I haven't mentioned anything about the ammunition yet. You can choose between 308 cal and the new 303 cal rounds. And if you craft the futuristic electric cover rounds, you will also need to craft those special battery rounds for it. Both new ammunitions can be crafted at the camp's workbench. Ok, the next weapon has a little bit more firepower, meaning a lot. Fusillade Grenade Launcher by Quad Rioters. I love this kind of shit. It's really like aiming, accuracy, who the hell needs this shit? Yeah, this is definitely the kind of weapon you should grab when there's a burglar in your house. But seriously now, this one is so much fun. I mean, it's a grenade launcher. But it does not only use simple grenades. You can also choose between following ammunition types. Grapnel mode, kinda like a shotgun but even more mean. Fletched round, this is just like a big bullet and has improved range. Then there's the high explosive grenade, the breaching grenade. Well, pretty much like normal frags, but with different stats. There are two others, but first let me point out the insane amount of customization on the actual weapon. The texture quality is a bit plain and simple, but the models are really damn nice. You can literally go from a very futuristic look with monitors and stuff to a more scavy makeshift look, lots of variety included. Also a very huge variety of skins. But anyway, I wanted to save the most fun firing mods for the end. Let me introduce you to my good friends, Incineration and Cryo Grenade. Guys, I know, my English is not very good. But I am fairly sure there is no better way to say fuck you and everybody standing next to you than with this. The next weapon mod is even more extensive. Handmade Anti-Material Rifle Redux by Shu Burglar. If you don't like the Anti-Material Rifle from the Creation Club or just don't want to pay for it, here's the alternative. I mean, there's even a mockery sticker you can put on it. This is hilarious. It's like kicking Bethesda in the nuts. See? This? This is why we won't have mods for the next games. I mean, I certainly hope they won't rob us of modability, but I bet they get really triggered by stuff like this. Anyway, this weapon is highly customizable too. You can have it as a single bullet shooter, it will even reload automatically after you shoot, or you can modify it to shoot shotgun shells. A sniper rifle which shoots shotgun shells. That will literally blow your enemies' minds. Or you can have it with a regular 6 bullet clip. 
Ammo types are 50 cal, 308 and shotgun shells obviously. The customization is nice too, 4 barrels, a shitload of different sides, 4 stocks, 4 muzzle attachments and also some stickers and tapes. Yep, the blue tape is going wild again. Next we have a classic handgun, Bergmann 1896, uh, I mean 1896, automatic pistol by D Magnus. This handgun has an unusual shape, but it does look kinda noble too. It uses the animations from the Deliverer, but has some custom sounds. You can choose between automatic and semi-automatic firing modes, and also between several ammo types. 5mm, 38, 10mm or 45. There is also a fair amount of visible customization available, different metal skins, different hand grips with different wood colors, two scopes, different barrel length and also some more stat stuff like damage modifiers. And now for the final weapon mod we have to go back, all the way back to the very foundation of weapon craftsmanship. The one weapon which has dominated both the world of hunting and warfare from the very beginning. Bow Project by Gogi28. Yes, bows and fallouts. It's Gogi28, so it's going to happen, right? While there are custom animations to make it look like you are actually using it in both third and first person, this is still not Skyrim, so you won't really see your character put an arrow into the bow. You will only see your character apply tension on the bow, as you press the reload button. But the actual arrow only appears once you shoot it. This is just how the mechanics work, I guess. So it actually looks better in third person. You will also be able to retrieve the arrows. At least the normal ones. There are also some cool arrows with nice additional effects, like cryo, explosion and so on. They explode after a short time. Of course, the bows look fittingly different for the different arrow types. Just imagine this. You are being a raider, not suspecting anything bad, and all of a sudden something pierces your ass and starts beeping. This will be the moment you know you fucked up. Only that this doesn't work quite that way. Unfortunately, if you shoot an enemy directly, those effects don't work. You actually have to shoot the ground, for example, next to an enemy. Yeah, I have to admit, I was a bit disappointed. First of all, a quiver accessory for the back would make it more believable. Then the missing arrow. Well, that's tricky, but maybe something can be done, like add an accessory which gets automatically equipped as you reload and then unequipped as you press the fire button. Could do the trick. Then the animations also could use some improvement. The way it is right now, the bowstring is not even animated. Also in VATS it looks like you are using a gun. Maybe it's not possible to change VATS animations. And of course, it would be way cooler if you could actually pin the bombs to your enemies. Of course, I do realize it's easy to say all this, but modding is not an easy thing to do. Anyway, this is it for part 1. In the next episode, the armors and quest mods will follow, so keep an eye out. Links to all mods are as always in the description below. Don't forget to enter the mods you like. And if you watched the review up to this point, it would be cool if you could like the vid and subscribe for more. I thank you all for watching and see you soon!